With thanks to our sponsors, Julian James at Burley Heads, Race Centre is proud to announce that we'll be giving away this Supercars Limited Edition Pulsar watch to the winner of our 2020 V8 League season. The special watch features include chronograph function, stainless steel hard-coated case with black patent leather strap and red stitching, date calendar and 100 metres water resistant. Once again, we'd like to thank our friends at Julian James. at Hidden Valley. This is a recap of, of the event that took place. This is the third race of the night. Uh, it's a 2.8 kilometre lap. Track temps is currently 20 degrees, which is quite cool by Hidden Valley in the Northern Territory. Uh, so tyre wear should be reduced enough for tonight's race. That was a hotly contested uh, qualifying. I'll just run through the order for you. On pole, we have Daniel Albert Asano and Helio Caesar in P2. Thomas Foster on the second row of the grid with Greg Gavalas and Hector Him in P4. Nathan Mannix will start from P5 and Brad Mart next to him in the Aces. Mustang. Behind him we have David Baker, then Anthony Bisma, Andrew Murphy, Ross Licciardi, Wojcieslawski, then it's uh, Bryce Royal in the Monster Mustang. Behind him will be starting David Borg in the cool drive entry, Paul Firth, Ara Kalajan, and rounding out the grid is Trent Rebell in the race center. Okay, so we're just waiting for the green light. Alright, nervously waiting. Okay, and they're off, and Hurricane Agent gets a great start from the back of the grid. So they all race down to the turn one. It's Daniel Oppert Asano in the front. Oh, we see Ender Murphy in the inside barrier taking out three drivers while he runs in the back of David Baker. Three find it hard to get going again. Oh, we've got a spin with Arakalajan. Getting the back of the fence there. Hopefully he gets up. Okay. From the pack now it's still over to Sano, followed by Hello Caesar with Thomas Foster close behind. 
Greg Gavalas and Bradley Martin in P5. The previous two races, the tyre wear has been an issue uh, due to the heat and the loading on the front left. We can see gap forming just behind Brad Martin, but he's he's just got loose coming out of the final turn. That allows uh, Nathan Maddox to come up close behind in his drive. Will he get him in turn one under brakes? No. Not him up. He's faked it in. Just Nathan's Trent Rebell. P8. He's come from the back of the grid and he's already up into eighth position. Trying to make it seventh. It's uh, Bismo closes the gap on him there. It's a nice little battle going on. David Baker close behind him, Michelle P9. You can see Maddox on the back of uh, Martin still. So he take it down the straight for the second time for the night. Martin goes on the inside just trying to get out of the draft and, and protect his line into turn one. Goes back in. See Trink Rebell. Side by side turn one they go, but Visma has to yield as there's no more real estate left on the outside of the track there, so they all fall through the line. There's a great battle going on in the back. Up the front is still up at the side over with Hello Season close behind. Go back to the second pack now. Trent Bell, Brad Mark. One of the pack here. Brad's just recovering from uh, shoulder surgery, so he's now racing with two hands, which is a good thing. Wrestling these heavy V8, so. Hopefully he gets a speed of recovery and he's not going to do badly now as he's uh, holding down the knee six. See Trent Rebell trying to get in the drive here. He gets the job done and he's up in the P7. Oh, we can see Martin running wide there. Turn one, he's lost a few spots. He's down the back of the pack now, David Baker. Coming up the inside of Bismo, will, will I have it? Oh, he's just turned him. Okay, so he has yielded the spot and waited for Anthony to regain track position. Oh, but business thought he could hit him back off the circuit of state. Thank you very much. And off he goes. Not really sportsmanlike, and that'll be uh, investigated with the steward later on in the, in the week. Okay, we'll go back up the front. See, Hello, very close, trying to get any advantage he can by tucking in the draft. He's going to come out under brakes into turn one. Will he make it happen? He's definitely got the line, but will he be able to pull it up in front as he takes the lead? Robert Asano, but Robert Asano wants to make an issue of it while Foster comes close behind. Very good, strong racing here and a lot of respect amongst these top three. They've been a, the front contenders all, all year long. We can see Robert Asano on the, the soft tyre there, the thumb up softs. We've got uh, Foster on hards and I think Hello Caesar in front also on hard as well. We'll go on board with Opadasano now as he takes the line nice and tight with a good run out but Hello Caesar's got a better run down the main straight. There's no real uh, drafting advantage here as so Hello seems to be stretching out the lead down the main straight. We'll see how they go breaking into the turn one. Bring at the 150 mark, you really want to keep the car under control here because it is 
pretty much like turn two at East Creek, a double apex. It is quite a quite a short circuit. It's only just over a, a one minute lap as we go into the hairpin. So these three haven't really changed position lately. It looks like Baker further down the track in P8. Got clean air in front and behind. Something must have happened there. Mannix is up in a P6. We can see Brad Mart just in the background there. So gaps are opening up as we see Group Bell now up in a P5 from the back of the grid. That's our biggest climber for the this evening. Greg Gavalas has uh, been quite fortunate having a clean track either side of him, but uh, I'd say another couple of, we've got a yellow in P1, in turn one I should say. So, uh, okay, and that's, that's what's brought out the yellow flag, that's uh, David Borg in the core cool drive engine. He's taking a bit of time to get back on the circuit there. It is quite uh, dense in the in the sand trap, but he's uh, got back on and he's now in for P15. See the cap is closing on Gavala, so but he is actually holding firm out there. So we'll see how it goes over the next couple laps. Watch those uh, gap times. go back to the front because uh, Opera Sun has just retaken the lead from Halil. Bit of a glitch there but we're still on track. Lapping after lap five or six, it's Arik Lajin in the Penrite entry. The guys know that they'll be given blue flags, as we'll see from the marshals here. A bit late, but uh, probably asleep at the moment, having a nice coffee. Arik Lajin's just run wide there, so he's now in that sand trap, struggling to get back on the circuit. That's probably a good thing for the leaders, as they won't need to overtake in an awkward spot yielding a position. Thomas Foster's still hanging on the back of these two so he's doing a good job there. While this is going on we'll go further down the, the pack. Bryce Royal is in uh, P13 in the monster entry. Just left our collagen as well. We can see Trent Bell in the background about to lap right in P13. Anthony Bismar currently in P9. He's on he's running the hards at the moment, so probably get one pit stop out of this race. It is a 38 lap race. So we'll probably see one pit stop, uh, I'd say around the 19, 20 lap mark. So we've got Ross Licciardi in the Super Chief Auto entry. He's come back after a couple of rounds off. He's in uh, P12 at the moment. And he's coming up to the back of uh, 
either Paul Firth or yeah, that's Paul Firth. He's he's eleven. But we've got the leaders coming behind him now. Oh. Going five wide down the main straight. Ross has picked up a spot there as Paul got got a bit loose on the uh, entry to last turn. Opetasano is still in P1 as he takes a three, but Halil's trying to poke the nose in. We've got David Borg back in the, his favourite spot. Thomas has dropped off a bit now. He's a couple of seconds behind, but Halil's really making an issue of it out front. They're starting to get a bit loose now. I think they're both trying to push it, push it hard. See Halil. His front nose is quite close in under braking is quite strong. Daniels also conserving tyres here. See a bit of a lock up there. Well that could have been Trojaslowski in the background on the final turn, but we can see the drafting. He's really get it under brakes. Turn one, 150 mark, heavy braking. Marshals are looking the wrong way, but anyway. And Hillel gets the job done. Swapping position yet again. And here comes Tom Foster. He's licking his lips, trying to get on the back of this group. Hoping they make a mistake so he can benefit. He's just taking it easy back there as Hillel's doing a good job to keep uh, Daniel occupied, they're both occupied while Tom gets off the back. Just quickly see where Troy is, he looks like he's gone off there, just coming into the hairpin, now breaking himself. Apparently in P12, but he might be experiencing brake issues it looks like. That was a bit of a lock up as we see Brad Martin just Passing nice and safely. Okay, first set of pit stops. David Bork, Trent Bell, and Bryce Roll in the Monster Energy. It looks like we've got a retirement there. Ender Murphy already retiring from the race. It looks like Bryce Raw just drove in and straight back out again. Not too sure if that was the uh, drive-through penalty for some reason. I'm sure we'll get word from the commissaires. Back on board with Opera Sino now in P2, chasing down Halil. Settle the car down, get in early so you can get on the accelerator early and get a good run down the main straight. I'm seeing he's getting a good drop behind Halil and Halil trying to protect going on the inside, but he's going to have to go back out. Oh, moving under braking. I 
see how Foster's going behind him, P3. He's just watching all this unfold in front of him. like he is dropping off a little bit there but still one little mistake from the front two and he'll be back on the back of the, the lead back on board with Russell Chiardi P9 in the super cheap auto entry Ford Mustang like Nathan Mannix and Brad Martin are coming up behind him to lap him I assume as they're in P5 and 6 at the moment. We've got someone else in the lane there we can see Gavalis and Baker battling it out behind as well. Looks like we've had a retirement it sounds like he's had a, a steering wheel issue there so he's had to retire from the race that's unfortunate because Coming from the back of the grid up to fifth was quite quite an achievement. On board with David Baker, P7, he's got uh, clean air in front of him, so he's just running out his pace laps. He's hoping to get on the back of uh, the Mannix, Martin and, and uh, Gavalis group. They can get some valuable points for the championship. Might just bring up the current uh, championship standings uh, before the start of Hidden Valley. So Abadasano was leading the championship on 52, a little Caesar on 50, and they are the front two at the moment uh, in this race. Daniel Cicluna uh, in P3, Gavalas 4, Baker 5, who we're watching at the moment, Nathan Mannix P6, Martin, Brad Martin in P7, Bisma 8, Kevin Martens in P9, rounding out the top 10. Firth. So we'll see who's got the current lead. They haven't really lost each other yet. They're still still fighting it out for P1. Nice aerial drone shot of uh, Hello Caesar. We'll follow this for a lot. He's got a bit wide there on, on the turn, but he's carrying a lot more speed because he, he's gaining on uh, away from Opatasano, I should say. Try and see the both of them there. You see Daniel taking an earlier line in. Halil's carrying a bit more speed going wider. Not too sure if that's better on the tyres or not. Lou would be burning the fronts while Daniel would be burning the rears. See a bit of a lock up from Halil there. It is a tough, tight corner, second gear corner. We're coming up to another second gear. Oh, it gets on the inside. This is a great battle for the lead. I think we've swapped the lead about four times now. Drive out of the last corner down the main straight. You can see he's keeping in contact with Caesar at the moment. In the slipstream. The little definitely knows he's there because he's trying to weave and protect his line. He's too strong under brake. Oh, that's quite. We've lost contact with Foster. He might have dropped off the back there. He could have also uh, gone through the lane for another for his first pit stop. So he's further back down. I'd say he's just completed his first pit stop. So we are seeing a lot of drivers come through now. You see Twojeslowski just in front of the net entry. It's, um, 
Foster in P6, they definitely come in for tyres. Looks like Brad Martin's got um, Nathan Mannix again, maybe he's made a mistake. Part of the circuit there, but these two are still close to each other, cutting the same lap times at the moment. We can see in the background Greg Gavalas again wanting to be part of this group. Go back out the front, looks like lead's changed yet again. No, it hasn't, still Hillel's decent, but it looks like, yes, Hillel's dived into the lane there. Daniel will probably want to cut a couple of fast laps out in clean air, depending on traffic, as we're passing Greg Gavalas, who's obviously just made his pit stop. Daniel's in P1, while Hillel takes Takes his set of tyres. We've got Thomas Foster still in P5. I thought he, Halil would come out just in front of him, but it looks like we're going past the start finish line and we see Mannix coming in for his set of tyres. David Baker, P8. Might just go through the field. Uh, Paul Firth in P9, doing a great job in the cool card entry. You guys can join us for the next round. It will be a mystery track as uh, we don't do the double headers like real life, but we do follow the real circuit. So uh, our next race is next Wednesday night and the guys don't know what track we'll be doing it until they arrive at, at the shop on our full motion simulator. So if you do want to join us, just Make sure you hit us up on Facebook or send us an info at info at racecenter.com and just uh, let us know that you want to be part of it. You pick a car and you start racing as we see Hillel trying to lap the back marker of uh, Paul Firth. He's trying to get out of the way. So we can see Foster right on the back of Hillel now. Brad Martin in, in for his pit stop. And there's Obadasano coming out of the pits. So Foster's managed to to uh, gain on undercut uh, Obadasano by coming in. It looks like a backmark is trying to make an issue of it in the turn one. Daniel's on cold tyres, so he can't afford to really push hard yet until one or two laps, and and then. Uh, then start pushing the hot laps, chasing these guys down. But towards the end of the race, we might see that Hillel and Foster will drop back, and Daniel on pressures that are tyres will start gaining. Eric Kalajan's also retired from the race. Could have been mechanical or electrical issues there. I'm not too sure. Nice little pack here. They've both done their tyre stops and they're back on and looks like Gavalis has uh, dropped some time or made a little mistake in the pits because it's now a three, three car race for P4. Nice little battle going on with Gavalis, Mannix and Martin on screen for the Aces Mustang. Not too bad but just coming out of surgery, shoulder surgery, reconstructive, I, I think it was. Looks like he's in, he may have, oh that's too bad, it looks like he's received a pit lane penalty and is uh, now serving a drive through. We follow Bisma down the main straight coming into turn one. Looks like there's a bit of an issue. Hello flag, we see Troy Cheslowski 
Lance rejoining the circuit there. Anthony's up in a P6, which is a great position for him. He's quite a strong driver. Another retirement, David Bork in the court drive entry. We'll just go back to the front and see how Abadasano is going, whether he's closing the gap. We can see he's visually catching uh, Tom Foster there, who's dropped a bit off season as he stretches the lead to two seconds. This should be third, fourth gear, down a second for the Final corner on the main straight, get nice drive out there. We see better tactics going on down the main straight. Foster knows off the Sonos, kind of get him on under, not under brakes, but just in the draft. As he closes the gap, you can see quite obvious. Back of Foster's car now on board with Hopper Sano. See how close he gets on the brakes and different lines he takes. He's taking the inside curve to get a smoother run out, which is boxed him on the outside, but Tom's not buying it. He's an experienced campaigner. Nice, nice advertisement for 23 red there and fuel PBG on the back of Foster's car. Great shot as we see this. See how fast the guy, guys go and put a sign of up on the inside. Got a drag race down the main straight and you can actually see the drag strip next to the main straight. The Opera Sano gets nice and clear, gets a good run, and he takes P2 from Foster. Foster would just be happy to sit in and, and stay with it. Oh, Robert Sun has run wide, he's outbreak himself. And Foster's regained P2 as Robert Sun stays back in P3. Up front, it's Hillel Caesar, and someone's parking in the bushes. Look like Jaslowski in the Ned Mustang. Don't know how he got in there. Like Cease is coming on the back of uh, David Baker. He's currently in P7. So the guys have lapped everyone up to P7 at this stage. No blue flags as he's not within range yet. I'm sure the next flag march will be away but the blue flag for the leaders. Chislowski, he's in, still look like braking issues, so he's in P12 at the moment. Probably needs to adjust his brake bias. Bryce Royal still circulating, he's in P11, that's a great effort. He's 18 car field. Ross is uh, relatively new, but he's doing a good job. He's definitely improving each race. Puts a lot of time into his practice. Came to the circuit early to um, get his iron. He's never driven at uh, Hidden Valley before, so great effort for him and Ticket. Greg Cabalas up in a P4 in the truck assist Mustang. He's got Nathan Mannix right behind him. Greg's on the hards at the moment, so is uh, Nathan. You can tell by the... Uh, white Dunlop logo on the side wall of the tyre. These cars are proudly provided by FBR Factor. 
uh, they do great modding for the R Factor 2 community and also uh, a set of Corsa. So if you want these cars, get on a Steam Workshop, search for FBR Factor and look for the 2020 season cars. They've just updated, uh, made an update and now James Courtney's Ford Mustang Boost Mobile uh, is on there as well so you can choose that we've already got someone nominated that for next race so it's Cavalis and Mannix P4 and 5 just follow Foster to see where he's at whether he's still holding P2 and no, that looks like Orsano has got passed as they come up the back of uh, Baker I say Foster's quite happy to just take P3 for today, unless there's a mistake made up front. Foster's, uh, he, he knows there's a couple of guys coming, he's probably been given the blue flag at this point. He doesn't want to get in their way, because it looks like a tight battle there right behind him. We get blue flag? No. You can see the brake just light up as they brake into turn one. Probably the heaviest braking zone of the circuit. Mannix has dropped off a bit, so I think he's run a bit wide in the turn one there. So that's given uh, Cavalis a bit of breathing space. Just see what the gap is up front, whether Opera Sun is making any ground on Halil. You can visually see he is getting a bit closer there. a couple of little battles but nothing no one's really battling it out too hard you can see Bryce Roll going a bit wide there on the grass Paul's quite comfortable in P10 at the moment but Ross is um, not Ross, Bryce Royals right behind him in P11, so we'll see if that gap closes up towards the end of the race. Looks like our leaders are coming on on the main straight, the start finish line, so they'll definitely be catching these two quite quickly. And it looks like the gap is closing as Opadasano is definitely closing in on his fresher tyres, he's on the soft. Soft Dunlops, as you can see by the yellow stripe on the sidewall there. And the hards are white. Okay, so Brad Martin served his penalty, it looks like. work out what position he's currently in. I think it's six. Because uh, Nathan Mannix, who we can see there, he's in P5. And it, oh, he's just run wide on the grass. That's uh, the nose of Troy Chiklowski there. And we've got Ross Lichiardi back there, and that's a cheap entry. So the tyres should st to start getting a bit old again now. This should be their second set for the race. So that's, uh, that's Mannix in, in P6, P5 I should say, and then Baker could be in P6, yes he is. So that puts Bradley Martin into P7. Okay, so we're going to definitely get a battle on our hands here. Definitely closing in for the kill. We're only a few laps away to the end of the race. You see Thomas Foster dropping back there. 
about half a front straight length. Will this be the lap Daniel will take? Regains the lead? No, the level's too strong. Oh, but he gets on the inside as Halil goes wide. Costing a lot of time now, I think that's the race. We can't see Halil in the background. There he is. That's costing valuable time. He's even come in the clutches of uh, fostering P3. And that's an unfortunate mistake from Halil. He's kicking himself right now because he could have held out the lead there but Opetisano has taken it back and you can see the gap there is at least three to four seconds we don't unfortunately have the telemetry up at the moment because it is a replay we had some technical issues on the night so we've got you this replay to keep the drivers updated and for you entertained and give an indication on who's who's leading so that looks like Daniel will stretch out his championship lead should he hold this position and not make any mistakes it is quite easy to run wide into turn one and um, find yourself in the centrum and that just costs you way too much time at least five seconds so it's definitely worth breaking early just to make sure that you do make the turn Daniel's comfortably got the lead now ahead of Halil in P2. And Foster, I can't see Foster anywhere, so he's still there. He's actually in P2. But something's happened to Halil again. Because we've got Tom Foster in P2. Okay, so Tom Foster coming down the main straight. Should only have a couple laps left. See Troy Cheslowski rejoining the circuit there. Not sure how he how he lost it. He's getting out of the way of everyone coming through, including P2. That's right, blue flag. Troy, he's in P12. There. Sorry about that. <laughs> Daniel's going too fast to the circuit, so the computer couldn't handle it. He still holds P1. We'll see if um, Hillel gets on the back of uh, Foster. As he's uh, struggling back there in P3. Looks like he's dropping off quite a fair bit. So he's just taking turn one. He's coming into the hairpin, so that's a big gap to regain in a short amount of time before the end of the race. I'm not sure that's going to happen, so Halil was uh, even on points after the second race tonight with Daniel Opetisano, so definitely whoever won this race was going to win, win the round. It looks like Daniel's going to do that in P1. Too strong out front tonight. Daniel took a later, later pit stop, so his tyres are definitely working for him towards the latter end of the race, and that's all that counts, as he wants to take the chequered flag first. Thomas Foster 
being patient all night has rewarded him with a P2 at the moment. Providing he doesn't make any mistakes, we'll see him cross the line in second place. So we've got Ross Lucciardi and Pete in the top 10 uh, on the Super Cheap Auto entry. Looks like a bit of a battle just in front of them with uh, Bradley Martin and Ross Lucciardi. No, that's lapping. So uh, Bryce Royal, I should say, in the Monster Energy ticket board. So he goes through there, Nathan Mannix is in P5 and we haven't seen much of Greg Gavalis because he's had quite an easy race to be honest, but P4 is a great effort. Baker's coming down the main straight now, We've got Hillel Caesar coming up behind him in P3. Hillel's driving for Cooler Master, he's our sponsored entry. Quite a good looking uh, livery too, racing with the real boys tonight. Oh. Paul Firth cutting laps on in P11. Good effort from here. Where's Bisma? Bisma's in P8, he's been quite quiet as well got caught up in that earlier tangle with uh, Baker but he's uh, settled down to being P8 looks like Daniel's crossed the line and he's taken the checkered flag so congratulations to Daniel Obadasano that brings us to the end of the end of the race. Hillel's also got out of the car. Got Foster doing his little victory dance for P2. Going around for an extra lap. So that means uh, Baker finishes in P6. Great effort from him. That's a great result. Nathan Mannix Cross the line in P5, so that's a solid effort from him as well. He was having an earlier battle with uh, Bradley Martin before he received that penalty. So it's quite unfortunate. We've got uh, Bryce finishing in P9. Paul Firth trying to do doughies after the race. Give the crowd something to talk about. He's got his old stable mate Bisma right in front of him. Hara retired early. Gavilas is out of the car now. So at the end of that it looks like Daniel Opetasano is Stretch his lead in P1. He's uh, leading the championship on 72 points. Hello Caesar close behind on 67. Greg Gavalis. Actually, I need to change that. Greg Gavalis uh, in P3 on 48 points. He's climbed the ladder with David Baker in P4. Daniel Cicluna has dropped back a little. He's missed the last few races. Nathan Mannix in P6. Bradley Martin, P7 on 33 points, Anthony Bismar on 30, Thomas Foster on 28 and rounding out the top 10 was Paul Firth on 21 points. Thank you very much for joining the race replay at Hidden Valley and we'll see you next time for our race with a mystery track. Again, if you want to get in contact with us, please reach out at info at .com or hook us up on uh, on the Facebook page. Just send us a message and say you want to be part of it and we'll uh, get you on board. You can always uh, get us on Discord as well. Alright guys, till next time, see you later.